Chicago's. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson. Only the biggest stories, only the biggest guests, and only the biggest opinions. This is AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy, real estate investor Chris Amator uh, made some news a couple of weeks ago when uh, ABC7 Chicago profiled what he was doing to assist migrants who had been uh, uh, transported to Chicago, again, by their choosing. Um, He uh, and his family uh, took in 448 adults and children at 15 of the residential buildings he owns, including one on the South Shore, in the South Shore neighborhood that was profiled in that piece on ABC7. And, of course, that generated a lot of discussion in terms of is this um, somebody who is just uh, trying to do something philanthropic, as he said in the interview that he gave. This is, you know, God's plan kind of thing. Um, Is it somebody who's trying to get above market rents like maybe some of those West Loop developers retrofitting their commercial spaces for uh, migrant housing and getting um, exponentially more rent than the market would otherwise provide for office space. So there was we had a little bit of a discussion with our listeners on that. Yeah, I was inclined to give him the benefit of the doubt, of course, still am. Yeah. And we're pleased to have him on the show to talk more about what he did and how's it going. Chris Amator, thanks for being with us. Appreciate it. Hey, how, how you doing, Dan, Amy? Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, we yep. hear you fine. Great. So you, you came on our oh. show, and then what happened? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so when I came on your show last Monday, um, then I, uh, later on I got called into uh, Alderman Mitchell's office on the 7th Ward. And, uh, yeah, and I, so I went, you know, uh, out of respect and everything, and, uh, and, and he was very angry at me. And uh, I can't talk about a lot of the details uh, over the air, but, you know, I did have my life threatened, and I did have um, – Life um, threatened. My livelihood threatened uh, because uh, I pl- I placed in two buildings about a hundred migrants into um, Alderman Mitchell's ward, and so when I did that, I you know I was there. It was like six at night, you know, and 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 I walked in, and he he immediately started pointing his finger at me, yelling at me, telling me how dare I put that uh, how I put migrants in his ward, and and the one thing I just wanted to say that. Uh, was not put in the Chicago Sun Times and was not reported on is why they uh, why he threatened my life, and I just wanted to say what I said. It was pretty much the only thing I said it, in the whole meeting was uh, so as he's yelling at me and I just stopped and I looked at him and I said, the amount of hate that is pouring out of you, Alderman Mitchell, is overwhelming, and I pray to God that you find peace in your heart. And that's when he threw everything off his desk and he threatened my life and he threatened to block some zoning thing that I didn't know anything about. And, and then he threatened to take away a contract that I have with the city of Chicago. And and I just want to say just one thing about that, because I can't talk too much of, of the detail, is that I just want to say that um, I was really scared, and, and I decided to give my fear to God. And and then I also decided to forgive Alderman Mitchell for what he's, he's done. But then this morning I came up with something that, uh, you know, I also – decided to turn the other cheek to Alderman Mitchell because right now he, you know, he decided he's going to come after me with uh, building violations and stuff like that. And which I, that's fine. You know, if he doesn't want to do that, but I decided to do something called the St. Christopher project where we're going to clean up every single block in the seventh ward. And I call for anyone who's homeless or anyone that is unemployed to meet me tomorrow morning at 9 a.m at Alderman Mitchell's office in the parking lot. And this is being paid by, by me, Chris Amator, not my company. And anyone that wants to work, they'll get a red ticket with an address in, in the seventh ward, Alderman's ward, uh, with a block. And then they will be paid to clean that block and take before and after pictures. Um, and that's the main thing I wanted to come and say. Uh, but uh, any other questions you have that 
that's fine. Well, we have a lot of questions. Well, you got to understand. I mean, when you say, I, I pray that you find peace in your heart, I mean, those are fighting words. So you can understand why uh, Alderman Mitchell got so upset. Um, no, it's uh, it's very interesting, um, the reaction. And it's also, it's also, gosh, not in keeping. I mean, this is a, a gentleman, uh, Alderman Mitchell, who is a acolyte of one Tony, Tony, Tony Preckwinkle. And uh, um, for him to not be welcoming huh. to uh, your efforts to uh, house migrants in his ward, uh, gosh, that just doesn't seem in keeping with the public philosophy on this issue as so expressed by Preckwinkle and city leadership. I'm, I'm so surprised that a, an alderman would be party to one position publicly and then have a very different view privately. That is that is just shocking in the city of Chicago. Hmm. Yeah, just an observation. I'm sure you never run into that otherwise. Um, so um, on this, so so by the way, first and foremost, in the seventh ward, um, you're going to maintain the provision of uh, shelter for the migrants in, in your buildings in that ward? Uh, yes, yes. So all the migrants that I've moved in, you know, I, I purchased beds for them, pillows, blankets, um, heat, electric, so everything, and, and trying to, and then now I'm providing them services that they need so they could get their work permits and stuff like that, or whatever they need to, to, to get on their feet so they don't, because I'm not receiving any rent. And so, and I haven't asked for any rent. That's not the reason I'm doing this. I'm okay. I just saw people in need on the street, and I'm just trying to help them. That's it. You know, and that, that and that, that go and that goes and that goes citywide for all the buildings that all of your buildings, buildings you own that you've opened up to migrants. You're not you're not participating in the city rental assistance program or anything like that. This is just you doing what you believe is is right to help people who yeah, are I mean, in need. I mean, I'm also a businessman, and before I did it, I offered the city because. The city told me that the, re the whole reason I did this, the city told me there's 550 migrants that they cannot, they have no room in the shelter for. It was going to be negative 14 degrees. I'm on the street. I'm looking at these children in their eyes and I decided to help them. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I put them in my building, maybe some were in shelters, maybe some tricked me and this and that, that but what, you know, whatever, I, the way I was looking at it, that opens another spot for someone else to go into the shelter. And, 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 and that's where I'm at, you know, Consider it a spiritual awakening or whatever, and but this is what I did, and you know there's nothing I can do about it now. So, well, so the only thing I'm doing now is I'm trying to get them the services they need and trying to get them on their feet because uh, very few people are willing to help them right now. And for mm -hmm. food, they're children, you, Dan, you, you know that's the thing. No, I, I, I hear you. Understand. And for food, you're giving them. Here's about politics in Washington, you know. It's like, you know. but anyways. So I, Chris, for food, are you're giving them access to it at Instacart? Yeah, I have them? Instacart delivered. Um, at first, it was every four days because uh, now it's every week. And I, I'm, I'm going to wean off that. It's like, and that's the thing. Like, the people that I'm dealing with are mainly from Venezuela. And, I mean, I'm not judging or anything, but, you know, they want to work. They're here, like, you know, they're not here for handouts, you know. <laughs> so, like, even when I'm delivering it, they're, they're telling me to stop, you know. And, and uh, you know, just because they know I'm not the city, I'm, I'm just one man and, and, uh, you know, and, and they understand I was just trying to help them. So, um, but yeah, that's, but it's not like I'm going to have to baby them the rest of their life. That's what some people think, you know, but that's not it, you know. Well, with respect to um, the uh, migrants' families living in your buildings, um, was there any sort of, are these families like moms and dads and kids? Or, or do you, are you like weeding out single men, anything like that? Because, I mean, I, I, again, I'm not, um, I, I have no issue with your philanthropy, your philanthropy and your spiritual awakening, but I mean, there's just the the reality. The reality that you're describing is definitely part of the reality. Kids that didn't have coats in the winter. I remember you saying that in your interview with ABC Seven, and I understand that. That's a good instinct. But there's the, another part of the reality too, which is that arrests of people listing Venezuela as their birthplace have soared about 2,500 percent from. Uh, last year uh, because of the influx and because there is a certain element here and the CWB Chicago is reporting incident after incident of people not just from Venezuela but I'm just using that as an example who are committing crimes and so I wonder how you if there was any sort of screening that you used yeah that's a good question Dan uh, yeah I mean Dan I've been like volunteering over at uh, 
the two two four one South Halstead, which is the Pilsen. That's the largest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the largest shelter that there is. <clears throat> I actually sent Amy. Uh, I sent her all the pictures that I received because I have pretty much everyone's phone number on WhatsApp who lives, uh, who's living in that shelter. Because you know, you're not allowed in there. No one's allowed in there. No one's no one's even seen in there. Like not even the people that are volunteering. So the, the actual residents have been texting me their pictures. And, and I, out of the 2,500 people that are there, at least 1,500 are under the age of 10 years old. Mm-hmm. It is the saddest thing I have ever seen. And all they have is the clothes on their back. And thank God for companies like Instituto and Life Center, uh, 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 New Life, uh, who are providing them jackets and who are providing them stuff because they come here with sandals and nothing. Like, they're not prepared for Chicago weather. And, and just look at the pictures. There's people in the hospital, you know, with pneumonia, kids. There's people that, you know, as I'm driving, I drove all these kids, all these people to my properties in my own pickup truck. Right in the bag, listening to the children cough and the sickness. It's just like, what are we doing? It feels like Gross we have Gaza at our front doorsteps, and, and no one's willing to help. All they want to do is complain, about, or they want to talk about the politics, which we can't control that. So I'm saying just help the children on the street. And I don't care what color they are, you know, black, Hispanic. But the only children I see on the street right now are the Venezuelan people. That's only what I see, and I'm on the Chicago all day long. Well, what other neighborhoods are you putting um these migrants in besides the seventh ward are there any other wards oh yeah there's probably a total of like five or six wards where my 15 properties are um uh, the majority of them are on the south side of chicago in like the greater grand crossing area auburn gresham um some in inglewood uh the south shore south chicago um some in uh, morgan park beverly area and you haven't had any you haven't had any threats from them you can look forward. No, well, you can look forward to being having your life threatened by more, more older humans. Then, so that'll be something to look forward well, to. Yeah, I mean, I just say I, I I pray to God, and I decided I'm going to do the right thing, no matter what. If someone wants to threaten my livelihood or my life, that I put that I put the results in God's hand. I'm going to um, do what, what I believe is right. Did did you did you answer that my screening question though? Do you screen uh, for who you uh, house in your buildings? No, we were just, uh, I was just, you know, picking people off the street, and I was just picking whoever had children. That's who okay. I was grabbing. Okay, all right. So, no, well, I do not that, screen anyone. But Well, that's sort of screening, okay. Um, and the, um, the you, you mentioned uh, uh, Alderman Greg Mitchell there who threatened your life and did a whole sort of melodramatic throwing his stuff off his desk because he's so upset with you and so forth. They're so scary, those aldermen. They're big, tough guys. Um you said uh, he threatened some city contract you have with the city. What what contract do you have with the city? Uh, well, it's with the subsidiary of the city. It's with the Chicago Housing Authority. Um, I manage like 3,500 units for the Chicago Housing Authority. Oh, okay. And, uh, and that's what, like, I've only met Alderman Mitchell one other time in my life, and that had something to do with uh, that contract. I, I met him at his office. Um and, uh, right. you know, so that's only I've only had, I've only met him twice in my life. And, uh, Something to do with that contract. Like, I see you have this big contract with the CHA. Maybe you should support my reelection. Um, oh, yeah, so, uh, so I see. Yeah. Gonna, are they going to look at your properties and assess them for code violations now? Is that the, their game plan? Yeah, that's what I was. Uh, that's what I was told from a contact I have in the city. I don't know if it's true or not, but I mean, that's fine. I mean, I'm offering collaboration with the mayor, too, you know, and. I mean, I don't know if everyone, you know, because, you know, we all have commandments and everything. You know, the mayor's command, if, if you look at his, what he's supposed to do, number two is the beautification of Chicago. So I offer support for, you know, Alderman Mitchell and Mayor Johnson to help me with the St. Christopher Project to clean up the 7th Ward. And I say when we're done with that, we go clean up the rest of the south side and west side and the north side of Chicago because it's filthy. It is. So I drive around funny. all day. And the, uh, if we, people need jobs, I'm willing to pay for it right now. So you meet me at Alderman Mitchell's office tomorrow, 9 a.m., if you want a job. Well, I'm not, it's a subcontracting job. I'll pay you cash for the, day, for the day's work because we're going to clean it up by Friday. Is, is CHA housing any migrants? No, absolutely not. This is of all, course not. This is all Chris Amateur's properties, all of the no. Chicago Housing Authority has nothing to do with this. No, I know. I mean, I know they have nothing to do with your properties, but I'm just saying in general, like, just since you have a relationship with them, you maybe know how they work. Do you have any knowledge that they're housing migrants in other properties, not yours? 
Oh no, I I, I have no knowledge about that. I, no I don't knowledge. know. Okay. I you know I, I haven't talked to them about that or anything. No, uh, I don't know. With with respect to your properties, how were all these properties vacant to begin with? Well, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to have people know my business, but uh, I um, like when I say 15 properties, uh, uh, you know, some of them are larger buildings that you know maybe there's three openings uh, in in the building and everything. Like there's a total of uh, 36 units to be to be exact with. Uh, with the with the migrants and and you know and it, I'm not treating these as shelters either you know it's if you have a family of three or, or or less you get one bedroom and if you have more than three in your family you get two bedrooms so that way everyone's able to have their own space and everything like there's not people sleeping in the common areas and stuff like that so this was um, well, okay I just want to understand so this was vacancies in your building it's not the entire building that's being yeah, turned I, over I had like a, you know I had like an, a a seven percent vacancy rate and I was able to fill it with that and then. Um, yeah, I've been I've been investing. You know, I've been doing this for about twenty years, and I built a portfolio, and and so the, yeah. that was my vacancy rate yeah. that I filled. Well, and, think- and that's what I mean, and, and and that's what I said to the mayor of Chicago. I go, you know, how easily we could solve this problem. All you have to do is offer like twelve hundred bucks a month, and everyone, and and you know, Pangea, uh, WBD, all these South Side property management and West Side and North Side property management companies could just fill their vacancy rates. And we could solve this problem, but it's yeah. like no one wants to solve the problem. All they want to do is build 160 million dollar uh, tents. Yeah, another way, to, another, way another way to another way to solve the problem. Another way to solve the problem was to not not be a sanctuary city and county and state and and not be a, a magnet for uh, this wow, sort of. Yeah. That's way above my pay grade, Dan. I understand. I'm just. I, I understand. People here now. I, I understand. I, I understand. I understand. Yeah. You're on the ground trying to deal with the reality on the ground, and I, I I respect that. I appreciate it. But do you think eventually the city will pay you for the time that you're? I mean, in the space that you're offering. I don't know, but I'm I'm not contacting them anymore or anything. Uh, it's yeah. been a very poor experience, and and I understand. You know, I <laughs> I I picked the fight with the you know. Someone very powerful. It's not very. They, I don't think their administration are, 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 are intended to do the right thing. Yeah. And I'm going to, and I'm probably going to have to suffer for that. But, you know, like I said, I know it sounds all weird and everything, because I know a lot of people don't believe in God these days. But I do, and I'm putting it in God's, in God's hands. No, and I'm I, just going to continue to do the right thing. I have great respect for that and what you're doing, um, and the reason you're doing it, and we we take it at face value, so we appreciate it. And yeah, you're learning something. A lot of people have learned that no good deed goes unpunished in Chicago. Uh, Chris, tell us again about uh, the St. Christopher Project before we let you go. Just the details on it, if people want to get involved. Yeah, uh, like I said, this all kind of came to me this morning. So I, I am going to be posting it on my Twitter account, which is uh, I don't have a business one, so just at. Chris Amator 37. That's at Chris Amator 37. And I'm going to post the picture of the map. And I'm going to have red tickets handing out at Alderman Mitchell's office tomorrow on 95th Street, uh, if he allows us to do it. Um, and I'm going to hand out these red tickets that will have an address on it. And I'll put your name on it. And then after you clean the block and take the before and after pictures, uh, if you don't have a phone or whatever, we'll help you with that. And, uh, and then you submit the ticket to my office when you're done, and you will receive uh approximately 120 dollars for your work oh nice uh, which would be minimum wage eight dollars an hour um just you know this is for people who just want to help but i'm also going to pay and it's for people who don't who are homeless anyone who's homeless don't come if you already have a full-time job and everything like that we don't i'm not looking for volunteers i'm looking for people who need money who need help in the city of chicago in the seventh ward people who live in the seventh ward are some of the migrants going to be coming uh, uh, uh. Oh. Yeah, they, you know what? The migrants who are living in there, guess what they are now? They are constituents of the Seventh Ward Alderman, and you're damn right they're going to help, and they're going right. to be paid for it. All right, boy, those are fighting words for Greg Mitchell again. Oh, boy. Uh, Chris Amator, no, and I appreciate it. Chris Amator, Chicago Property Owner. Chris, thanks so much for your time, and keep us updated on uh, your progress and, uh, you know, the, the next uh, – uh, rash of death threats you get from Chicago elected officials, too. I'd be interested to hear that. All right, Dan, Amy, thanks for having me on. Thank you, and he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. All right, coming up on Chicago's Morning Answer. Is uh, the big guy finally getting tough with Iran? We'll start there with the Heritage Foundation's Stephen Bucci at 707. But first, let's stop into that newsroom and say hello once again to Mike Scott. 
This morning, we're watching developments after a man was shot and killed by police in Carroll Stream. A suspected home invader was shot on the south side. A swastika discovered at Loyola University. The Bulls' Zach Levine to under.